want to flash your ESP32 without a PC, then you need just your phone and a cable. That's it. In this video, we will flash an ESP32 based device using an Android phone. We will use a free app to upload binary files to this ESP32 dev kit v1 module. Namaste and welcome back to Avinashi Tech. First, let's talk a bit about some general stuff. Most videos that I came across use an app called Arduino Droid. Now, Arduino Droid is only really suitable for basic applications. If you are working with a larger code base or a much more complex project, this isn't the correct tool recommended. That said, it's worth noting that this app isn't available on the Play Store for latest Android versions. But you can obviously still download it from browser. For the real stuff, you will need a PC or a system that supports ESP IDF or even the Arduino ID. Why, you ask? Because Mobile processors aren't as powerful. And navigating through the mobile file system is, um, let's be honest, not fun. It makes development slow, especially when you are dealing with a lot of libraries. Plus, when you are developing on a PC, you get proper serial terminals for debugging and monitoring output something you really miss out on when working from a phone. But let's say you have a scenario where you have already developed your code and you have the binary file ready. Now imagine you are in a remote location or maybe somewhere without access to your full setup or you want to update firmware to a bunch of existing products on site. In situations like this, how do you deploy your code to an ESP32 device efficiently? Well, there are two main options available. First, you can upload the firmware using your Android phone with an OTG adapter and a micro USB cable. And this is what we will be doing in this video. Second, you can use over there updates or OTA. This method lets you push firmware to your ESP32 wirelessly. There are two types of OTA available, one over Wi-Fi and the other over Bluetooth for this particular module. Now each has its own use case and set of requirements, but they are both super powerful when you're working remotely. In this video, however, we will stick to the first method that is using the OTG cable, but keep an eye out for future videos where I'll cover OTA, maybe, in detail. Let's get to our first method of uploading using cables. Alright, so, basic hardware first. I have a ESP32 dev kit V1 with me, a micro USB cable, an OTG cable, and of course, our Android phone. Alright, now let us search for OTG in our mobile settings and turn it on. I am currently on Android version 13 on this device and the interface could be different for your particular Android version. Let us now download ESP32 Flash application from Play Store. Once installed, let's open it up. So I have three binary files available with me on this device that I would need to flash. Bootloader.bin, PartitionTable.bin and our main project.bin. Since I have developed my firmware using ESP IDF platform, let me show you from where to get this particular binary files. In your project directory, where you have your source and configuration files, you will also find a build folder after successful build. Go to that particular folder and you have your main project.bin file present. Then in partition table folder, you have partition table.bin file. And lastly, in bootloader folder, there is a bootloader.bin file. 
So you just have to transfer these files to your Android device. Okay, back to our mobile app. Let's select all three files by clicking browse option. And now the crucial step, adding memory address for respective binary files. Bootloader.bin would be flashed at 0 hex 1000. Then partition table dot bin at zero hex eight thousand, and our main project application binary file at zero hex ten thousand. First, I am uploading a simple Blinky code to this ESP32 dev kit. After selecting the files, it is time to click flash on the bottom of the screen. The app wants us to put the board in bootloader mode. For that. I will press and hold boot button on the module, then press and release enable or reset button. Finally, I will release boot button. The program starts to upload. A few moments later. After waiting for a few moments, our code is finally uploaded. But the LED is not blinking. For that, we need to manually reset our boot. So we have the blinking LED program running. We will repeat this procedure with our other module as well. First, we will connect it using OTG cable, then open the app and upload necessary files. Finally, click flash. We will press the boot and reset button in earlier discussed sequence. And finally, we will have both our modules with working LED blinking code. All right. Next, I will be uploading BLE peripheral based example on one of the module. I have already made a dedicated video on this particular topic for ESP32. Do check it out if not yet done. So, I will connect the module over OTG once again and this time change the project binary file to BLE peripheral one. After successful selection, let's click the flash button at the bottom. Let's put the board in bootloader mode after following proper sequence of boot and reset button. A few moments later. Once code is uploaded, let's open up an RF Connect app on my mobile phone. Give all the permissions necessary and scan for our device. Nothing. Oh yeah, we need to reset man. There it is, a device. Avinashi Tech is displayed on scan. Let's hit connect and see the Bluetooth service available. After enabling notification, we can see the message LED on and LED off in sync with onboard LED being displayed. Great. So that would be it in this video. Hope next time when you are in need of uploading code to ESP32 without a laptop system, this video guides you through it. As always, if you like the content, feel free to like and share this video. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel if not already done. Signing off.